Good morning, everyone. I hope everyone is well. Thank you so much for tuning in to today's webinar. If you are tuned in live, welcome. And anyone watching back the recording, uh, thank you so much for taking the time to listen in. Um, my name is Lauren and I work for Enterprise Nation and I'm really excited to be moderating this panel today and chatting to these fabulous ladies that you see on the screen. Um, before we get started, I did want to share that Dell have very generously um, given us an exclusive offer. So any attendees that have tuned in in today and um, they will be able to receive 20% off hardware and um, so there's a few ways to to retrieve this offer anyone that has opted in to hear from Dell and um, at the point of registration will automatically get the link and um, otherwise you can log into your enterprise nation dashboard and retrieve it there or alternatively you can drop the Dell team an email at sbauk at dell.com. I will share those details at the end in case anyone missed them. Um, so yeah, let's get started. The conversation today is all around starting a business in the midst of a pandemic, obviously as we still are, unfortunately. Um, but we've got some, as I say, great ladies here to share their experiences, pearls of wisdom, and hopefully answer some audience questions as well. So please do drop in the chat box if you've got any burning questions to ask. Um, so we will start with some brief introductions, um, and then I have a few questions to guide the conversation, but really informal, grab a coffee, and I hope it is worthwhile. Um, so Paula, I will come across to you. Can we hear a little bit more about you, please? Sure. Good morning, everybody. Thank you so much, Enterprise Nation, for inviting us. It is lovely to be here with Egby and Roshanak, very excited. Uh, thanks everybody for attending. Um, I lead a startup within Dell. It's a business development organization. We focus on the consumer, uh, so end consumers and small businesses. We are a year old this month. So believe it or not, we started just as the pandemic kicked off a year ago. And we, we go through the same, absolutely the same uh, pains and challenges and you know, uh, as any small businesses, the only difference is that we are uh, part of Dell. Um, so I lead a team of very talented people. We started um, Me Plus One a year ago, and we're now over 30 people. So very excited to be here, to be sharing that experience, what we've learned, and how we can help you with the challenges that you, you know, you're coming across. Amazing. Thank you so much, Paula. And Roshanak, I'll come across to you. Welcome. Hello. Again, I would like to say, as Paula did, thank you very much for coming, for spending your time with us. Thank you so much to Enterprise Nation for making this possible uh, for all of us to have the chat and for all of you to benefit from it. So um, I would like to tell you a little bit about myself. I'm Dr. Roshan Akashimun. I am a scientific and executive consultant and a transformational advisor. I am a computational clinical neuroscientist by training. Uh, it's a mouthful, I know. I worked, before I started my business, I worked with um, neurological and psychiatric patients. So people who had Parkinson's or essential tremor, um, OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder or Tourette syndrome, depression, things like that, um, who no longer were responding to medications and therapies and opted to have a new kind of uh, neurosurgery called deep brain stimulation. And so I was in the operating room doing this with these patients and then after, before and after that, I was also continuing to do the research to understand the biology that led to this, uh, these pathologies. So I am very well trained in the biological basis of behavior. Um, I started studying, literally studying psychology when I was 12 and got a bachelor's in behavioral neuroscience. So for me, it's very, very exciting to understand a, the, a huge part, if, if not one of the biggest parts, so environment and genetics, of, of who we are is driven internally. And if we don't understand the mechanisms that, that define us and drive us, and in particular our behaviors, because they're really routed in our, rooted in our brains, then we've really lost a, a tremendous chance to be empowered, to be the masters of our own destiny, and to drive our lives in the direction that we want. And that works for us personally and professionally and in particular as business women, because all of that comes forth from our own sense of self. So what I do is I, I use the different sciences. I have a background in molecular biology, I use molecular biology, physics, you know, behavioral neuroscience, all of that combined with you know, um, uh, wisdom to you know, wisdom cultures and um, to, to not just give the tools 
right? That would be the sciences and so on and so forth. But the direction, the understanding of when to use the hammer and when to use the screwdriver and so on and so forth, so that we're not just drowning information, but that information is translated to knowledge, which is useful, and then that knowledge is directed by wisdom. And that's what I do. Amazing. Thank you so much. Honestly, I think I speak for everyone. We're so um, appreciative for you being on the panel today and, and we're, we're excited to hear, hear a little bit more about your experiences. Um, and last yeah, but not least, thank you. And we've got Egbe as well. Welcome. Oh, thanks for having me. Um, I'm Egbe Manton. I am a legal consultant um, and a lawyer also, and I run a consultancy for startups and scale-ups. Um, I help them with things like contracts, data protection and IP. So I basically take care of the legals while the small business owners or startups and scale-ups take care of their passion. So that's all about me. Amazing. Thank you so much, Egbe. And, and we'll, we'll stick with you. And um, the question I had, obviously, um, you are very experienced, um, but you decided to obviously take the plunge and start a business um, in 2020, which is obviously a very interesting year to start a business. Tell us a little bit more about your experiences and any top tips for anyone out there that's thinking, I'd love to start, but is it the right time? Tell us more. I'll, I'll be honest, it's never a good time <laughs> to start a business. I mean, I, I chose um, a really random time to do it in 2020 because of the pandemic. Um, but I thought that if I could run the business in a pandemic, then it's got a really good chance of being <laughs> being good, uh, successful going forward. Um, I started the business by accident. Um, basically, there were a lot of people that were reaching out to me saying that they were being dropped from their contracts and um, their clients weren't really getting in touch in terms of making payments. So they were just wanting to know what their legal rights were. So that's how it all started. Um, but in terms of the types of things that people need to think about, um, the top tips, is sometimes you've got to be a little bit stubborn in business. So you're going to have a lot of people who will have an opinion on your business idea or your proposition or how you, um, what particular market, for example, that you aim at. And that's important to take account of that, but also there's a reason why you're starting your business. You're passionate about something. So sometimes you just have to kind of be a little bit stubborn and push forward your idea regardless of the um, feedback that you might get. Take it into account, yes, but your, vision, your, your viewpoint is the most important because you're going to have to in the dark days when it's really tough and you've got no clients and you're trying to market and you feel like nobody gets your product, mm -hmm. you're going to have to push your business in those times. So if you're passionate about it and you know the reason why you're doing it, then it makes it a whole lot easier. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Always going back to that why is so important, isn't it? Because, yeah, I mean, entrepreneurship, as we know, is such a roller coaster. Um, so, you know, taking those kind of good days and, and the bad days um, in your stride is so important and having that resilience to carry on. So, yeah, thank you so much, Egbe. Um, and, and Paula, in, in regards to um, the way we are now communicating, as we all are um, on this virtual event right now, you know, we, we very much change the way we speak to people. We speak to our um, peers online, our family, our our work colleagues or clients so Paula how have you managed to continue to, to talk and engage with your clients and and you know provide excellent customer service in these times I, th I think you've put it perfectly there uh, the, the whole customer experience and the, the way that we interact has completely dramatically changed it has a whole new meaning uh, and uh, all of us right practically overnight one day after the other we had to go and transition to a virtual life all of a sudden we are, you know, working from home, teaching at home, and, and there is a balance between work and, and life. It's all intertwined together. Um, so if you think about Dell and, and all of us, uh, like any small business, we've also had to take all our face-to-face -face interactions and move them through uh, technology using Zoom, uh, Microsoft Teams, but one thing for us, and I think for you, if you're running a small business, is to ensure that you're using technology and you're using the tools that we've got to give that continuous personable approach. Um, so the, the main priority for us here was that we want to let you know, as our customer, you know, and whoever you are, wherever you are, that one, we're here for you. Two, we genuinely care and we completely understand what you're going through. Um, we're going to support you the best way that we can, uh, be it by just listening to concerns uh, and, you know, understanding the moment you're going through. Or is it do you need to go online and you've got customers and, you know, your business is suddenly uh, going to, to transition completely? So how can 
you know, what is the best technology to help you with that? Uh, maybe you need flexible payment terms. It's just really listening in to, to, to what's important to them and then showing that as, as our customer, we've got your back. You know, we've got your back and, and your business um, is, is our priority. There's nothing else more important for us than to make sure that you are able and enabled to continue to, to, to transact and to continue to serve your customers. So that's that's what we, we have been doing, prioritizing interactions, interactions um, listening in, and just being really there for them. Definitely. And you mentioned that you've gone from obviously just yourself and now it's a team. How are you staying engaged with your team virtually? You know, making sure that you're all you're all happy and, and working together in, in synergy. How you've been doing that? We do so many things. Uh, so, so the main thing is always to be in touch, right? You've you've got to be in touch. And um, we had a meeting yesterday. And if you think about this team that we've built, I know face to face out of the thirty, I know three people. Mm -hmm. I've never seen face to face my team, and we had to uh, hire. We had to learn to work together. We had to to build this community, you know, this whole motion, never ever having spent time face to face. So what is critical is have very open discussions, very transparent discussions, really take time to learn who you are as a person. So, you know, if I'm working with you, what do you like? Uh, what do you do, you know, what do you do at the weekend? How is your family set up? What's your working environment? Spending time learning, because I can't just go and poke you and say, Egbert, you know, can we, it doesn't happen. We are interrupting each other on, on IMs, on, on Teams, you know, on anything. So you have, you have to stay connected, um, take time to have fun. Uh, we do we do fun Fridays uh, as, as often as possible. And it's never about work. It's always about a theme. So be it, you know, we, we're multicultural. So we have we have um, um, many, many nationalities. We've got people based in uh, Morocco, in India, in Bratislava, you know, Slovakia. We've got people in Germany. It's a multicultural team. So there are many different things we do. What sports you like, you know, uh, tell us. Uh, we play the one lie and two truths. We do many things just to keep interacting with each other as a team because we need to really bond together. That, that is very critical. So, and then we do a business meeting as well, which is to keep everybody focused on what we've got to go and achieve. But it's a combination, right? It's not all about business. It's not all about fun. You've got to have the right balance. Absolutely. And it's about remembering that, you know, that's a person behind the screen, you know, with hobbies and interests passions and a family and I know our team we we literally are so elated when we see a little baby come on screen or a dog or you know because it's just yes. it's just lovely you know we want to you know like enjoy each other's company and learn more about each other so absolutely and and Roshana obviously you're part of the the Dwen network so you're obviously networking virtually and um, how's that going for you tell us a bit more so um, I love the Dwen Network. I, I highly recommend it to all the women entrepreneurs out there. And I'm not just saying that I, I actually have been part of different groups and, you know, but I, I was very fortunate to end up in Dwen. And I find a lot of, like you ladies, I find a lot of really quality um, business women and just women there. Um, they... I think it's so important to have a strong network. So for example, even the fact that I'm here is through the Dwen network. How else would I have ended up here? So we're talking about a pandemic and being virtual and all the downsides, but the upside is, is how we can all connect as Paula was saying with people all around the world that would never have been available to us before. We wouldn't have even thought that far, right? So, so having a network is really important for multiple reasons. When you're starting a business and as you continue in your business, just like in life, you need support. The number one question they ask before you get into medical school is, what's your support structure? What's your support group? Because you're gonna need it. So when you start a business and when you're going through a business, well, you're really going through it. Like Egby was saying, you know, you, you're up, you're down, you, you sometimes you really just gotta get through and who's your support? Where, and now, if you can find a network like Duane and find the people that match you, then you really have done a, excuse me, you've made a tremendous investment in yourself and in your business. Because again, your business comes from you. 
So I highly recommend that. I, I think it's really important for, for all people, business people and women <laughs> to invest in themselves. What is more important? I mean, and especially as women, we tend to not, you know, we're almost conditioned, you know, eat the burnt toast, put yourself last. You know, so and when we start to get into business, we're taking care of our employees, we're taking care of our clients, we're taking care of our families, we're taking care of everyone, and then we're left behind. And when you don't have anything in your cup, you got nothing to give. So when your cup runs over, is when you can really give, is when you can really share. And that giving and that sharing has a very different feel, has a very different energy. So being able to connect with others, it's like having a small pond or a very large pond. So you go to places like one, you've got a much larger pond, you've given yourself more opportunity to learn, to share, to grow. And it's really very interactive. All givers need receivers, all receivers need givers, right? So networks really support us with that. Amazing, yeah, thank you so much for sharing. And yeah, I think it's a huge positive to come out of this, as you say, and, and I think, you know, for, from, from my perspective, I do a lot of different events and have, have done a lot of offline events in the past, a lot of offline networking events, which have been great, but actually it's enabled people that haven't been able to come in an offline capacity to join. So it's been a lot more inclusive, which is really great to see. So I think I think the future potentially for events will be hybrid, um, you know, some offline, but, but still, um, you know, serving the needs of people online as well, um, which I think is a really great positive. Um, Okay. Actually, wait, can I just add something to that? Speaking of the networks, I would say that as a as a person who started a business during the pandemic and as a business owner, had I not had, as you said, you've got all these events and there's so many webinars, so many people are putting great content out there more than ever before. I would never have been able to do what I did if I didn't have all of that available to me. And one of the things you get from networking is just having the exposure and knowing that something is coming. And in the US, I just want to say, I, and everybody should really avail themselves of these kinds of networks in their own countries, because I know we've got a, a, an international group here. So we have the Small Business Association. We've heard a lot about what's going on with the US and needing to get money to keep the small businesses going. And they, the SBA, have something set up called SCORE. And SCORE gives free mentorship. That's part of also what you get out of networks. Free mentorship, um, free, adv free advice, free forms. When I was actually creating my LLC, I went to one of my mentors and got all that information and in five minutes I was done. So I think it's really important to be able to find mentors and find all the information that we want through these networking interactions that we give and receive from. Absolutely. Yeah, thank you for sharing that. That's really important. Um, Egbe, we spoke last week about, um, you know, in the legal industry, is there many women? And you said at more of a junior level, you do um, converse with a lot of women. But when you get to that more senior level, it is predominantly males. And what's the importance, do you think, about supporting women, particularly in your in your industry, Egbe? I think um, I think it's just in general, regardless of the industry, it's important, right, to have that diverse kind of males, females. Uh, littered throughout the, the seniority structure and I think I think when sometimes when women get to kind of like medium type level but in terms of medium management obviously some women might go on to have kids or um, other women are focused on other things which means that for some reason there seems to be like a, not a filter system but when you start to heat, get to those senior kind of uh, positions we're just missing and um, even with the positive um, uh, in the, uh, initiatives that have been uh, happening in the last five years, there is, they're still missing. Okay, you'll see maybe a, a bit more, but they're still missing. And that has an impact, I think, on the next generation of, of lawyers who are coming up because you need to see somebody that looks like you and understands your challenges. And if they're not there, this will this cycle will continue and continue. So it's really important, even pandemic or no pandemic, that we still focus on the fact that in some industries women are just missing and what's the reason for that and how can we tackle that absolutely i'd actually love to come both to paula and roshanak for the same question because you mentioned relatable role models and that's so important isn't it from from you know and who is relatable to you what industry where where do they come from what are their experiences and um, so paula what I'm, I'm intrigued what got you into the world of tech 
Um, what got me into the world of tech? I, I believe it or not, I am a, a, a geek, and I and I'll prove it to you. Right now, I'm testing two watches to see which one I like most. I love um, that. So okay, I I am a real geek. Uh, um, I love anything tech, anything. Uh, I'm married to an engineer. You know, we we break things apart and build them back up again. It's just something that I enjoy. Uh, I've always been in, into this. Um, so I have a lot of fun in IT. And and Egbert, you said something to me. You know that it's just resonated so well. And is we need we need people that look like us that we can relate to and and let me tell you um there are not many of us out here and and everybody needs a hero i mean i'm sitting in my son's room as you you, you can see right he's got all his avengers here that they're his heroes we as we grow up we continue to want to have heroes we want to have people who are like us who inspire us and we need women to be out there, to be uh, uh, courageous enough to to go into industries like legal, like brain surgery. Oh my God, you know, when I hear Russian, I kind of go, my God, if I think I'm crazy, she's insane. She's brilliant. It, it, that we need women to take, to have the courage to go into places where we're not comfortable or we, we're the minority and just break through. So guess what? We can be the heroes for, for the next generation behind us. And that's what these ladies are doing. I'm very inspired by them. Absolutely. No, I thank you for that. Um, Roshanak, what inspired you to get into the world of medicine? So, uh, well, I, everybody in my family is a medical doctor. So I was, I was like the black sheep, you know, <laughs> who went into research. But um, I loved it. You know, when I was, uh, it's very important also the way that we, and this is what Egby and, and also Paul were saying, you know, how you see yourself in whom and so when I was young, I remember asking my dad, who was a chief of gastroenterology, you know, where do babies come from? I think I was like three or four years old. So my dad, not telling me about the stork or the birds and the bees, what did my dad do? He sat me on his lap, got my older brother, who's a few years older, sat him on the other lap, pulled out a medical text. <laughs> I was like, this is how, and I loved it. I loved it. I was like, oh, I understand. And I think it really makes a difference because to me there's a lot of people like i gave this talk to the new york women in business a couple of weeks ago on goal setting and habits and the organizer was so nervous about me being too geeky about it and you know people get so scared when they hear science or maths or and but and it turned out well thank god but you know they just get you know especially women like oh because we've been pushed back from it but i wasn't i was like go you know and so whenever we had questions my parents had answers i mean real answers we had tons they bought us encyclopedias so so we it was it was open to us to to and for me although i come from a middle eastern family and they had very traditional values when it came to education there was no difference you know and if my grades were good i was in trouble <laughs> so i was encouraged and i was given the means it's like what Eddie was saying i was given the means to be able to go forward not just the encouragement i was never told that i couldn't in fact to keep me busy before i started school my mother gave me my older brother's homework so i was doing long division before i started school it's insane so it's very very important and then and what we have in academia is called the leaky pipeline. And this is what Egby was talking about. In the lower levels, sure, you got lots of women. But as you go up, it's that leaky pipeline, the women start to fall out. And one of the things that has been happening in academics is a real strong push to have women scientists go out and speak to, to children, to speak to schoolgirls, to say, here we are, this is what we look like. And um, they're like, um, you can go on, on different feeds and find out, you know, this, this, this is what a scientist looks like. And you'll see people with different color hair and, you know, L LGBTQ, I was wrong. Uh, and, um, you know, just all different kinds. So it's really important for us, as I said, this is a complex issue. You want to look at the different levels of where we're being encouraged or discouraged without pushing. My parents never pushed me. And a lot of times when we're telling girls you can be in STEM, maybe they don't want to. What we want to do is make the, the playing field available to everyone. Available to everyone. 
absolutely thank you so much um we've had a few questions more on the logistics which i think is important to cover as well and so i will come across um to you paula if that's okay um i'll just pop the question here for a second um so manita thank you um so manita is is new to this she's thinking about starting her own small business a, a skincare brand um she wow. basically what are the most important things that she needs to keep in mind at the start? So if, if, if you know, you were sat with Manita today, what are a few things that you would say, you know, to really think about and have in order at those early stages? First of all, congratulations uh, for even starting to think about having a business. It takes a lot more than courage. It takes, you know, a lot of passion. And, and so well done, Manisha, for, for, for thinking about it. Um, I, I always go by the three things, you know, the three things that are important and that combines my geeky brain with my maths brain. I, I always go to simplify things. So first thing I would say is if you're really thinking about having a skincare brand and you, you know, that's what you love about it, go and create a plan uh, right now. Sit, sit and put everything down as a plan. Have a blueprint of everything, don't underestimate how critical this is. You're gonna get inundated with ideas, you're gonna get you know, inundated with tasks and you're not, not gonna know where to go first. It is very critical that you focus on what's gonna drive your business at the very beginning. So get a plan, put it, organize yourself and put that plan together. It is a pain, I will agree, okay, it took, it took us uh, about six, seven weeks to get our plan together. There's no easy task and, and I'll, we did it. Um, you have to estimate your numbers, you have to research, so take time to do that. The second thing that I always say is passion drives you. Passion is what really makes you want to do things, but knowledge has to guide you. So use your passion, your, you know, your motivation and everything, but get the knowledge. And what do I mean about that? Understand who your customer is. Where is your customer going today? Who are they buying from? What are they prepared to pay? Who are your competitors? How are they advertising? What does their product look like? Um, how can you do it better or simpler? Or, you know, how's their customer experience? Ring them up. Get your, take your passion, your drive, and get the knowledge to just really um, balance that. So when you build your knowledge, when you build that, again, go back to your plan and revisit it because it will, again, give you security, that sort of extra safety net. And the third, I think Roshanak touched on, and, and I am a firm, firm believer of this, um, support, okay? And, and my daughter's a medical student, uh, which is funny enough, and, and they did ask her, what's your support network? How's your home life? It is very important. You're starting up a business, you're going into the unknown, you're going into what I call the void, right? God knows what you're going to find there. So you need to have a mentor, somebody who can ground you, bring you back to, to you know, sorry, but you're not focusing on the right things. Let's go back to your priorities. You need to be able to ask for advice for somebody who's not in your day to day because they see blind spots and you don't. Um, uh, they connecting with people, be it through Dwayne, which which I, you know, again, I want to reiterate is a brilliant women network here. Uh, will open up your customer base. Maybe they can test your products. Maybe they can give you a view on is, is your packaging nice? Is it attractive? Um, so connect with your support network. You don't need to pay for research. You have support networks like Enterprise Nation, and there's so many webinars you can go here and just listen through, and they will give you that knowledge. So interact, exchange, but don't forget to plan. Don't forget to you know take your passion to the next level of knowledge and just connect with as many people as you can. That's my advice. Thank you so much. Yeah, I totally echo what you say there, particularly around that sort of identifying your buyer persona. So you mentioned skincare. Who is the skincare for? Is it for people with sensitive skin? Is it sustainable? Yes. Is it vegan? Is, you know, having a clear direction on who is this skincare brand for will really help you, particularly when you're promoting via social media. You know, you can create paid advertisements that are based on your exact buyer persona. So yeah, identifying that would be, I think, you know, number one is really important. And um, Egbe, you mentioned that you support mainly, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, startups. I think you said predominantly female startups. Was that something you naturally went into or were you always wanting to go into that sort of niche area? 
Um, yeah, so I do, I support startups and uh, businesses that are looking to scale. Um, and yeah, it was, for me, it was a natural fit because that was where um, there was a gap. So if you're, for example, likes of Apple or, you know, you're a big kind of corporate SME, then you're going to, like, you might go to a law firm or you might know um, someone or someone who can help you out with whatever you need um, help with. However, if, when you're a startup, everything's very lean, right? So you're probably going to be fa focused on trying to make that revenue, trying to market. Um, legals, let's be honest, will probably be at the bottom of your list. But whether or not they should be at the bottom of your list is another story, but they probably are. So when people are looking at legals, they're thinking, I want something that's um, affordable, will give me good value for money, and somebody that can help me through the different stages of my business. And what I was finding was that there wasn't that um, uh, um, uh, solution where people could get something affordable, good quality legal guidance without the faff of like calling somebody and setting up an appointment and going down to the high street or whatever it might be. So I just thought it's, it's probably the best way to go down would be to be accessible, to be affordable and be there through startup phase right through to scale up. So that's the reason why I chose that market. Amazing. Thank you so much for sharing. We've had a few questions about how do I find a network? How do I approach a network? How do I know what I like, what I dislike? Roshanak, tell us a bit more about your experience in that. So, um, networks beget networks. <laughs> right now, you can start by coming into Enterprise Nation and, and getting information there and starting to find people that you might want to reach out to. Um, definitely, I would say check out Dwen and see if you can get into Dwen because I can't sing enough praises about Dwen. I really loved it. Just so not like me. Um, and, and don't be afraid to reach out to people especially as people are going on. We, like I said, givers need receivers, receivers need givers. We love to give information, we love to share. We love to say, oh my God, do you know this is what was on my journey? This is what I needed to look out for. And also paying it forward. So it was, um, I was working on a mental health and academia nonprofit in the beginning of last year. And from there I started to learn about, oh, you can have free mentors, what? I didn't what did I know about that as an academic, right? So you can get free mentorship. Like I said, if you go to the score is all over the US and I don't know what's in the UK or in Australia or in India or anywhere else that everybody is looking, you know, you can, and I've been overseas. So I was still able, and because of the pandemic to avail myself of these mentor services because of everything being virtual now. So that was wonderful for me. Reach out to people, write an email, Find, don't just say, I'd love to pick your brain because that's, you know, nobody wants that. That's, that's terrible. Think about what's really on your mind. Like the question that you just got, um, for, you just gave to Paula from the, the, I forget the name of the lady who's asking for the skincare services. Um, you know, Paula gave very specific information about very specific things. And that's really helpful for yourself. Don't be shy. Be really honest. Where am I stuck? What do I need if you just need support? And oh, by the way, if you're starting a business, you should always have a lawyer. You should always have an accountant. And you should always have a banker that you can talk to regularly because without those, you're going to have a problem either in the beginning or later on. And the mentor is someone that takes you through and can give you resources. So find where, who in your country supports small businesses. Find who in your country is, you know, like for the Enterprise Nation, really supporting women with the She's Got This and all that. Find those people who are offering and then accept, receive from them. And from there, you meet others and then others and then others. That's a great way to start. And again, don't be afraid to cold call. Send an email to someone. Introduce yourself. Tell a little bit about yourself. Ask them what is relevant to you and if they wouldn't mind. And be specific. This is how much time I want. 15 minutes, 20 minutes, that sort of thing because you're more likely to get a yes back. Yeah, definitely. I know Eggbay's um, nodding there. Eggbay, do you often get sort of cold messages and things? Can I pick your brains about this? And can I pick <laughs> your brains about X? Eggbay, what yeah. are your thoughts on it? Do you know, I get that all the time. And I think um, 
<laughs> Do you know it's right when you <laughs> so funny when you said that but it's so true because sometimes it's all about the approach I have no problems in giving just generic guidance to people I have no problems because I think when someone's armed with that they can make better decisions so I, I have no problems giving that however when people come along and have these random broad or oh, can I just you know can I have some of your time to just talk about the following there's got like she said there's got to be a bit of giving and receiving right so I don't mind giving you my time but be respectful of my time and it's the same if I was reaching out to somebody else and I wanted to understand I've got a weakness for example in my business how can I um, plug that weakness I would go out to somebody who I know is has a strength in that area and I would say this is exactly the problem I'm having I don't know who my customer is or I want to crack a certain market what's your experience in this in, in relation to this particular market for these consumers and then at least then you're going there armed with an informative questions so that person can really pinpoint and help you on your way but most people if I'm honest and I'm shameless I go to a lot of people and ask for help <laughs> absolutely shameless and yeah. usually if it's a well thought out question they will definitely sit down with me and are more than happy to help me through so just be mindful of that when you're reaching out to people Really great advice. Thank you. And Paula, obviously, you know, you've recruited lately and did you sort of seek advice on on the recruitment process from any mentors? I advice on anything. I, I, I think I'm a, I'm a serial, you know, I, 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 I'm a bit of a, I, I, I raise my hand all the time. It, it is very important to, to just go in and connect with people and say, OK, um, this is my team. This is what I'm trying to do. Uh, these are the profiles of the people that I have. Or they, these are the profiles I'm thinking, if you're starting now, if you're starting to hire now, okay? So this is my business, this is what I do, this is how I interact with my customers. This is the profile of people that I'm looking for. What do you think? Just ask, you know? And 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 I think the, the girls put it perfectly, what you give, you receive, right? And you have to really be respectful of the time. Uh, you just, time is the most precious thing we have in is finite we don't have it to give it away so make it useful um so i always i always do ask for advice i have about five six people uh that i mentor with for different things uh on a regular basis i have a monthly interaction with these people for, for about an hour and each person will help me with a different area and and i always go in with questions as such um this is what's happening this is my approach what do you think? You know, what, what am I not seeing? And then it's amazing how the conversation changes and you think, oh, my God, how did I not think of that? Uh, sure. Hiring is very critical. You need to think about the profile that will connect with your customer. And by the way, very, very important thing I will say, hire people who are better than you, because I, I really think that and, you know, we've hired a lot of people. I would I would say here my entire team they are incredible and they're very different from each other so that's another thing that i would say is i have very talented people don't be afraid because the more runaway you give them the more successful your business will be so empower them enable them let them you know just go do um, and hire different people why because we complement each other so you may be extremely analytical and kpi driven somebody else may, may be very relationship driven pair them up together they will build a strong house. Uh, and, and that's how you look at it. So uh, again, I didn't know that from day one, I wanted to hire mini me's. I want everybody to be like me and they're, they're gonna get things done. Big mm -hmm. mistake, never do that. Don't ever hire mini you's. Mini you, you are you and somebody else, somebody else. They will come in to complement your team. So uh, I, I would absolutely give that advice and, and learn from experience. You know, I've been with teams for a long time. Don't hire mini you's, hire better you's uh and higher complementary use amazing great advice thank you and i think yeah communication open communication is key i, I spoke to someone recently who just started a business and they said to themselves i'm just going to shut myself off for three months on my laptop just me and they said within two weeks they were you know they, they were lost they felt lonely they felt overwhelmed um and and you know i think we need to appreciate the importance and the strength in talking to people you know i have it myself i'm working from home and I, I often just go to someone and say, oh, I'm, I'm a little bit stuck. I'm not sure about this. And just that different perspective. Literally, it's a light bulb moment. And you think, oh, yeah, yes. like, I didn't think of that. Oh, yeah, of course, that's really simple. So, yeah, just communication and not shutting yourself off 
is really important. Um, yeah, lots of nice comments, ladies. So thank you for joining. Um, we've had a question around marketing. Uh, Roshanna, I'd love to come to you because you've started setting up like social media handles and website, etc. Um, and Domini has asked, marketing is complicated. <laughs> um, how did you manage to work out who exactly you were targeting, Roshanna? Have you got in your clear, you know, clearly in your mind who your target audience is and any advice for the audience today? Yeah, I actually started with that. So, you know, I was I was living a pretty good life doing what I was doing and I really enjoyed it and it, and it filled me up and it had my passion, but I had a greater passion and that greater passion was to serve people on a larger scale and with something that was a bit more well-balanced. And so when I started, I started, and I think um, Paula, I'm not sure, was talking about this or we're all talking about this. No, Eddie's been saying it. Have your passion, have your passion, have your passion. So if you, why, and, and like you were saying before, Lauren, why do you want to do this? Start with your why. Start with your why when you're setting goals, right? Marketing is goal setting, right? Who's your target? That's your goal. So you want to ask yourself, why is this your goal? Why are you doing this? And then what are you hoping to get out of it? And if you're doing something just to get something out of it, you're starting off on the wrong foot. You have to, to, to do the right marketing, you have to go into what other people want and what other people need. So who are you serving? Why are you serving them? Why are you serving them this? And that's where you start to truly organically, authentically align yourself, align your business and align with your customer. It becomes incredibly natural when you start to think of it in that way. Then of course you can go and pick up, there's, as we all said, there's so many webinars available on, on how to market, digital marketing, digital, I mean, it's only February, we've got like tons of digital marketing in 2021, you know, and, and availing yourself of the different the one thing you have to be careful though is don't get overwhelmed because we get so much information and we're like, I have this, I have this, I have this, oh my God, oh my God, I have to do this. And then you think if I don't do all of it, you know, you don't have to be on every single social media channel at once. There is something to be said. You get traction for taking just the right amount of time to take the next step and move forward and move forward because you will work against yourself if you're spinning your wheels, right? That's when we're stuck in the snow, what happens when we just gun it? The wheels just spin and you're using a lot of energy and you're going nowhere. So to find your target audience, start with you. Then, as Paula said, do the research. Do the research. See where they are. See if when you get inside the, so you make a profile of the person that you're serving and how you would serve them. And then you say, then you really get into the details of this person. What is their persona? And where would they be looking for what they're looking for? And this is so important, especially for women. We don't value, especially for service, we don't value so much what we're offering because we're always thinking, will this person buy? Will they care? Will they this? Will they that? And what you don't realize is, and, and I learned this also in one of my webinars, what will your target person, what will your client lose if you don't serve them? If you don't give what you have to offer, what are they going to lose? What is that worth to them? So think of it in those terms as well. Yeah. Right. yeah, absolutely. Echo everything you say there. And it was interesting what you said about social media. I get that question daily. Lauren, do I need to be on all the different platforms no pick the one that you love because if you don't love it you won't enjoy it and it will become a chore and also focus on the one or two platforms where your audience hang out is <laughs> the most important thing you don't have to spread yourself too thinly across the wall um ladies i knew this would happen it's gone so quickly and i could chat to you all for another hour at least um so thank you all so much i will quickly just ask how people in the audience are best connecting with you after this session uh, paula i'll come to you uh, you can reach out to me on LinkedIn. You can uh, reach out to paula.shu, S-C-H-U-H, at dell.com. Uh, happy to, to connect. Um, I also want to say uh, that we have, uh, you know, uh, small, as you said, uh, Lauren, at the beginning, we have a coupon uh, for all of you attendees and for all the ladies out there who want, who need some tech. 
20% off. So email you, uh, sbuk at dell.com and ask for it. We'll, we'll make sure that you have it. And, you know, we're here to support you whatever way, my, my team as well. So thank you for the opportunity. Thank you for the time. Ladies, it's been amazing. Thank you. Thank you so much, Paula. And Ed Bay, how are people best connecting with you? Uh, Say my on LinkedIn and IG, uh, or you can go to mantonlegal.co.uk. Fabulous. And Roshanak? Well, I did finally get on LinkedIn, and then after 24 hours of being on it, they kicked me off and said, are you really you? So, so I can't give you a LinkedIn profile, but you can go to accesstothepath.com. That is the name of my business, accesstothepath.com. And um, you can sign up for a free consultation. Um, and also for those who want to continue, I will give a 20% discount on the consulting fees and the advising fees and so on and so forth. Um, or you could just email me at support at access to the path.com. Amazing. Thank you so much. And I'll make sure that I add those links to the follow up email in case you didn't manage to note those down. Um, and as Paula said, uh, Dell have generously um, given a exclusive offer to any attendees today, 20% off hardware. So drop that email, log into Enterprise Nation platform, or if you've opted in to hear from us, then you will get the link automatically. Ladies, thank you so much for joining me. It's been an absolute pleasure. I hope everyone on the call has found it useful and insightful and you're all inspired to keep going. Uh, keep going on that roller coaster that is entrepreneurship so i will say goodbye and have a great day everyone take care thank you, thank you take care yes bye bye